Hi guys and welcome to uh, another one of my channels. Um, today I'm going to be um, stripping apart a Kirby G6. Now this is one of my pickups that I picked up yesterday. Um, basically the lady had, ha had had it for new and uh, yeah she basically just used it as an upright so everything is practically brand new. The unit was used for I'd say a couple of months maybe a year or so um, and then it's just stored in the garage um, so it's a little bit well not corroded but a little bit dirty um, obviously I've washed the bag the bag is, is spotless um, and everything else is uh, pretty mint so I'll, what I'll do is I'll uh, show you what I've got in the box um, and then we'll start stripping her down and uh, getting her serviced and back in motion um, but yeah hope you enjoy the video and it also came with Full bottle sealed shampoo, so they obviously intended to use it, but just never, never bothered. Yeah, we've got the instruction book, we've got the uh, magic bag information, what goes over the curb when it's in the box. We even got the owner's care, warranty limited warranty for your rebuild, and how to re put it back in the box. Um, so yeah, um, let's get to it. So, um, what I tend to do is take it apart by hand. Um, I zoomed in on the, on the camera so you can actually see it. But um, yeah, just normally use hand torque screwdrivers, um, purely because I don't want to round any screws off. And it helps when you put them back in as well. Um, with the lead, I'll take the lead off. And then also with the lead, you just clean it with some dental wipes. Um, so obviously it's been stored. You don't know if it's been, it's been stored in the garage or anything. It could have been rats or anything crawling over it. You don't know. So yeah, just give it a take it apart and give it a good clean. Now most Kirby's come apart pretty much the same. Um, G6 um, was a a newer model from the G5. Um, what I'm assuming is a previous owner had a G5 and uh, traded it in because they've still got the accessory kit there which is a bit weird um, just get a screwdriver so yeah just under your screws if you never took Kirby apart before make sure you try and put them in some sort of order if you put them in a pot or anything like that that helps um, I've took quite a few apart recently so I'm quite used to it um, I've got another video um, with a G7 that I bought um, that was just putting it back together and assembling it um, so you can watch that one um, but yeah we'll go, go with this so this one I'm going to do a total dismantle clean and then put it all back together maintain it grease it oil it wherever it needs it um, etc is okay I've tested this so it does actually work so yeah undo your little screw put a screwdriver in there and it's just literally a lift and it should pop out it's just going to prove me wrong. Okay, maybe not. Let me just do that. Lift it up. There we go. Is that off? Oops. Just try from the screwdriver. So I've got plenty apart and then I'll kind of get that out so that's it. Right, so this is how it came um, in the box. It's got a G5 turbo tool kit, never used. The head is, you can see, spotless. The brush is brand spanking new. Probably been used once. You see a bit of, bit of dust or fluff on there. Um, the only thing she actually used were the hoses and maybe the poles. Um, so the poles are pretty clean, so don't 
don't think she even used those. So people could survive just using a high using a hose. We've got a brand new brand spanking new zip brush. It's a bit hard one handed. Uh, yeah, brand new G4, G6 zip brush. Never used. So brand new zip brush. As you can see, it's never ever been used, not even spun once. Um, then we've got obviously the accessory kit and handle just down there, still in the bag. System, just a bit dusty. unit itself. As you can see it's just a little bit corroded. That I just polished it last night to see if it would come up. But yeah, it's just been stored like so. Also it came with a shampoo system. Again, never used, just put in dust. Bottom still sealed. Just a few leaves, so obviously that will need cleaning and dusting off. Uh, right, so let's get to it. I'm going to take this apart now. Um, yeah, I'm assuming the person who had it before had a G5, and they just traded in. That's why we've got the accessory kit. I've already under this screw here that keeps the cable situated. Um, my only suggestion is when you take your screws out, obviously put them in a bit of an order so you know where they go. I mean, the, the ones that hold the lead and the plastic bit are pretty obvious because, I mean, the little black thick grub screws holds that plate. Once you've got that out, if it won't come out, just literally get a screwdriver and then just lift it up and it will pop out. And then what we'll do, I'll put all them to one side because they're all going to go in the wash. And what we're going to do, keep that grub screw there. And do this one here, which holds your lead in. And like so. And what I tend to do is I'll just put those three screws that I've took out of there in. That, so that pushes forward, pull down, and it comes. I'll just put those three screws in there. Pull your lead out, and that's your lead done. Okay. So again, like I said. I find these very handy. I mean, I had a curvy I took apart a couple of months back, and the water, we had no water, water went off, and I ended up using anti bat wipes to clean the thing. Um, so, yeah, just hold it there and just give it a good wipe, and then run that down the whole lead. And we'll see what actual crap comes off this. It doesn't look that dirty, like I say, she barely used it. Um, it's just been stored in the garage, and uh, yeah. In the middle of the country, so it's really dusty, so as you can see, yeah, bit of crap, but not too bad. I'll probably give that another wipe over after. Um, obviously, you can't wash them in the sink. Just give it a bit of a thick, get rid of some nastiness. Right, so next, once we've done on the dirt, I'm going to do those. I'm going to take the top off. So again, get your torque screwdriver and do the two back ones. Put them in there if you want. I tend to keep all those together because I know roughly where they go. And then we've got two screws. Counter torque screws, again torques, which are in the front of the 
Kirby. So just here and here. I did start it up last night. Um, like I say, when I got it home, it got no bag in it, but uh, it ran pretty sweet. And we'll soon see what the fans are like when we get it all out. Yeah, so undo those two against them, and again I'll put those in there again because I know where they go back. If if you're not sure, just get a bit of cardboard and write what's on them and where they've came from, and this just lifts off like so. Okay, and all we'll do is take those off because those can go in the wash. So I'm going to soak, I'll soak them in the sink and that I will polish up. You can see it's not too bad, but you can see what it should be like as to what it isn't. So I'll put that to one side. So again, next thing, thing to do is drop the tech drive out. So again, lift that, got your tech drive rod there, pull that out, and that you can go into the wash again. Now it's under your tech drive, it's literally your three screws on the back. This is one that holds the adjustment. So again, you shouldn't have to undo that, not straight away anyway. So what we'll do is get our torque screwdriver, get that one, no, it's the next one's up. And it's that one, that one, and that one, and that should come out. And I think that was the screw that was holding the casing at the top. So undo these three, and again, make sure your tech drive is in drive so it comes out. Because this will literally drop out. Undo that. And you can see from the bottom it's pretty spotless, I mean there's no corrosion along here. I've got an old G4 that I've had since new and all that was corroded. Obviously from shampooing and stuff but she's never even used the shampoo. So these three, oh sorry. belt so you only can see your belt just lift your belt off there we go so again that and you can see obviously this bit comes out it's pretty clean it's not it's a little bit of dust but as for the tech drive I don't think it's ever been used so again all we do is get a little screwdriver there undo the adjustment thing That there, so where it's come from. Slide that out. It should slide out. I might have to put it in neutral. There you go, slide it out. And that. That's yeah, amazing. This part comes off. Um, what I found with these as well, these are pressed on. So what tends to do is this tends to come off on some of the, mainly the G7 models. Um, so you can either get it pressed back on. Um, or I've seen a YouTube video where a guy um, it was coming loose and all he did was put a hacksaw cut in there and then just put a little circlip over it to hold it on. So I mean that'll go in the wash now. We'll reduce it later. Uh, wheels, those can go in the wash as well. Again, just push that in, get the hub caps off. Those can go in the wash. They're literally Sorry, literally clipped on. So if you put a screwdriver through the back, you can push them off. The front one's a little bit different. Um, they held on by a screw in the middle, and then obviously the hubcap, it's like three little round things. You can get to them and push them out, but you have to try not to bend them. So we just put that tech drive to one side. And the belt. There, so we don't lose it, and we'll give all that a clean. Right, so next process. Is this section here and um, what you've got as well as your bushes are in here so what I'll do is I'll take the tech drive 
just went off. I'm going to leave that on for now. Take that off to clean it. So again, screw like that. And off that comes. That can go for cleaning as well. Okay, so these are actually a Torx 20. Let's take that off. I mean, when you put it back on, you can see where the screws have been anyway, um, but normally it's about central, there shouldn't be too much movement. If there is a lot of movement in your tech drive, then all you do is undo these four screws. There's a, a just space of block here, tighten that block down, and that will, and then put it back on, and that will stop the over movement of the tech drive. So just put that there and put those screws with it. Now we'll take off the light assembly. Hear that loose screw there. If it's gone, there it's gone. That's the one I lost in the so I'll put that in there. Gonna go and, I'm going to strip this right down to clean it as there's a lot of de debris, spiders webs, stuff in here. Um, so what I tend to do is I'll take those out for now. So there's two there and then two in the front again. The two bit and these are two long ones. And the Torx 20s. See that's now coming away. And those come out. And put those there for that. Okay. Now I'm gonna take yeah, I'll take all this apart. So again, what you can do if you're not sure. Where, they came, where your screws came, where your wires came from. You could literally mark them up, so that would be your top. I mean, this is for your light anyway, so that would be your top. And then you could go one, two, and three, when you take them out. So you take that out there. Another one goes through the middle. And connects on the bottom and connects right behind there. So, take these out. They should stay cable tied together in that order anyway. But, yeah. Sharpie and I'll mark it one to four going down. There's one, there's two, 
is three. I'll put three marks on. And the bottom one is four. One, two, three, four. Let's put two marks on that. And one mark on the top. So that's your actual motor. And then behind that is the other way out. your light okay so that's just two one at the bottom and the one at the top up there I'll probably take that all apart after just give it a good clean all right so now da -da 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 -da, think 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 and what you've got is two screws here those two which run straight through into I mean those no that's the main here. So you've got this housing, this one here, that holds the main switch, okay, and then the two we took out held this casing in as well, and then there should be some screws on the bottom which we undo, and this casing should drop out, so, this one, Two self tappers go in the front. We've also got our earth strap, which is here. Undo that. So we'll do that earth strap. Little bit. So it's been a few weeks since I took one apart. Two bottom screws actually hold this front case into this, so you don't have to undo them unless you really want to go in and clean it. I'm going to undo them, but not at this point. You can literally just pull this housing out, this motor out. So we'll undo that with a torque screw with a washer. Just remember the two with the washer go in the bottom. What you can do is put them back in. So well, I've done that in the past. And it did those two come out the whole I don't know if it does the hair, is it? No, it would be that. We'll do them anyway, we just won't crack it open as it is. So let me your bottom two. Take that tends to stop it sliding out. So, again, a little Phillips screw, it's just dropped, but it's near the bottom, and that should just slide up. I'm 
to unscrew to the motor switch. That's all that's literally holding it. Then eight. Hold your motor. There you go. So again, you can see you don't need to. You can take. Say if you're taking all this apart, if you didn't want to, and you just wanted to change the fan, then again, it's just those two bottom screws which I took out. Then you take that off. Then you can change the fan. But if you do that, you've got to reseal it. Um, this fan doesn't look too bad. Um, let's check the bushes while we're at it. You can see there's a bit of crap in there, but we'll put the motor to one side for the moment. So there's a lot of debris in here. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll take it apart. Seeing it. So again, take the wheels off. And this can all go in the wash. One side again, so we're going to go. And like I was saying earlier, it comes off, comes off. Now, grease is pretty clean, that will all get cleaned. Again, like I said earlier, if you don't, if you're not sure about your screws, you can always put them back in where they came from, just for now, just so you know, so you don't lose them. If you're not sure, obviously two self tappers go at the front, long bolts go at the bottom, but I'm keeping those out because I'm going to crack this baby open and have a look. It doesn't look bad actually. So I don't know if it's worth taking that out to clean it to re-silicon it. Okay, what the hell? Alright, we'll crack it open. <sighs> no, say, she hasn't really used it. There's nothing. That is pretty clean. So I might just leave that as it is. And I'll put those two little screws back in. And we'll wash that as one. Save re silicon in it. Well, not where they go anyway. Right, so, um, yeah, take the motor apart. I'll check the uh, bushes. So check your bushes. I have got some spares, so I'm just going to get them. Right, so, um, yeah, we'll check these bushes. Um, what I've got here, I'll just grab some old ones. I've got some new sets, but I don't reckon these will be that bad. These are some old ones that I took out of my G4. Um, as you can see, they're, they're pretty worn. There's not barely anything left. I mean, that, that's been running since 1994. So, what's that, 25 years? So these things last a pretty long time. Um, so what we'll do, these are your bushes here. So what we'll do, get a Phillips screwdriver. And we're just gonna take that screw out. When you take it out, it's like a twist, because there is like a little locking pin on the bottom. These are self-tappers, so when you put them back in, don't over tighten them, because you will thread it. So you just twist, and as it pops. Now if we compare that, the G4 there's like three times the amount 
left so this has barely been used barely been used so push it back in there you go and again you've got to twist it you just get that pin there to locate into there twist and it should just pop back in once the cake ended there you go and get your screw and put your screw back in and we'll check the other side at the same time the other side should be pretty well that one's pretty well as long as there's no pressure on one side or on the other it should be pretty good so we'll just check this side Can take the cable tools off, but I can't be bothered. There you go, and then just pull that back in. And again, don't over tighten it. So, if you ever need to change your bushes, it's literally a Phillips screw, and you don't have to go to this consistency to, to change them. It's just a case of dropping your tech drive out, and you, know, you can access them with ease. Um, right, so what I might do is look at changing this fan because it is a bit battered they've been sucking something pretty lot I've got a new, new fan assembly here so we may as well change it already but what I'll do I'll pause you and I'll come back to you um, I'll just get a little paint brush just to dust most of this dust off um, and I'll get my vacuum and I'll vacuum it off at the same time um, if you've got a compressor, compressor is a lot easier but we need to get the fan off anyway to clean all behind here so yeah speak to you in a bit so anyway um yeah to take this fan assembly off it always like a eight mil bolt head there if you can get but you need a quarter thin um spanners fit in there but nine times out of ten it's just a literally a case of holding that and just cracking this anti-clockwise and there you go off it comes so they're normally pretty loose You should have a little washer. And this should quite brittle to pull off. I think so. You can see it's quite nasty behind there. There should be another washer there. And then those two. A rubber seal, which is there. Now, what I tend to do with this is just get some anti-back wipes. You can get a little duster brush if you want. I mean we can do it with the duster brush first. Let's just grab a brush. Pull the rag. You get a majority of it off. Literally by just wiping it. Once so. high. Good. Smear everything. I'll just back that up with the center here. But yeah, so all I'd do is just wipe it with an anti bat wipe. Clean that rubber seal, that rubber seal. Sometimes they come off, but yeah. Let's get a good wipe. Pretty, pretty clean. You know. Like I said, I don't think she used it. Um, don't 
those of you that are just getting to Kirby's, I mean, I used to demonstrate Kirby's back in the 90s and started off with a G3. Since that's why I bought a G4 when I knew no other vacuum was good or would do the job it's meant to do. Um, but yeah, the G6 was um, when it was brought out because you've got the G3, the G4, and the G5, and they were all 700 watts. Um, the G6 was the first model to have the modified bag, the, they modified the boot on it. So I think that's why they reduced the power output because they was getting more airflow with that um, new bag assembly. And uh, yeah, that's why they, uh, that's the rubber seal there, sweet. So keep that. So yeah, that's why they uh, reduced the power setting. One, it saved on power, and two, it's got just more suction, as much suction if not more. So in these kits, you can get these off eBay. Um, obviously get your new spindle, seal, rubber seal, and your washer. So just push that in there. Also, that goes on there, also. Then use a little plastic washer, goes there, and goes on top. Then your washer, and then your spindle. Now, like I said before, you can you can do this without stripping it totally down. There we go. Oops, your tightens. And then I tend to just hold the back there. They are self tightening anyway. And then once you've got your, yeah, yeah that's good enough. And she's spinning sound, no issues there whatsoever. Um, yeah, okay. So yeah, that's a bit, a bit battered that one. As you can see, they obviously suck some stones up or something. I mean, when these first came out, um, they used to use um, like a metal fan. Then they changed them to the, the Lexan fans. Um, which were prone to shattering from sort of people sucking up stones. Um, but yeah, um, they've gone a lot, come a long way. So yeah, that's the fan. So that motor is pretty cool. Um, yeah, I'll probably give that a vacuum off. I won't deafen you with a vacuum, and then I'll uh, get it back together. Start getting it back together. Um, so I'll put that to one side for now. I've still got other stuff to clean, so. What I'll do is I'll finish stripping this, so you can see stripped apart. So again, oops, take this apart. That wires cable tied through there, so you can snip these cable tools off, and I've got some more to put back on. normal cable toys you get from b &Q if you're in, in the UK or if you're here in Australia you can get from Bunnings um, so yeah we'll just snip that one off for now just so we can uh, get in so get a bit of tension on that take this apart so that will be the small one which is Torx 10. All this comes out. So, and we can polish all this up. And how are we going to do that before? No, it was that, sorry. Okay, let's hold that back up for now. So you can do these. It's a Torx 20. Just make it easier for polishing to take that off. Um, I really didn't need to cut that wire, but you put them back in so you don't lose them. So you know where they go. That's what I tend to do. 
that there, one there, one can come off. Again, that's literally held on by two screws. One there. On the later models, they did change the uh, light assembly to LED. Um, considering the LED is meant to be better, um, I've got a Centria and it's packed up on it. And uh, our Centria was, what, be eight years old now. And the bulb from 1994 in my uh, G4 is still working. So, go figure. Right, so. Just got to adjust that now. Yeah. Just remember how this hinge assembly goes back. If you're not sure, I just rewind this video and, and play it back. Um, that's what it's the first time. We'll take photos. Um, when you're taking them apart, so you know things go back together and where they go. So. You have to take that off, and that comes out like so, just to get that off there. Okay, so to release this, it's just get a screwdriver in there, and there's a little thing there, and then push forward, and out she comes. So as you can see there, it's just literally a clip. And it literally clips on there, and that is your launch assembly. Which again, we'll give that a bit of a wipe. Just match it with some uh, anti bat wipes. That just pulls out. That pulls out of there. In fact, we'll give that a wash. We'll drop that in the sink. That right there. Okay, um, get these a clean. Take this apart in a minute and get some oil on. Check those bearings. Get that wipe over and then we'll get that polish up. Need to leave that in. Breaking it, and it's near a little clip again. I think, yeah, just that little clip there. Little clip there, there we go. And that should pop. Yeah, it's just that clip there, and two that push up. That's it, so you press that down and it actually pops. Easy. So I've got that and that to polish up. Got this to give it a bit of a blowout, a bit of a clean. Take the wheels off, give them a bit of a scrub. And uh, yeah, I'll come back to you and we'll start putting them back together. So just a quick one, because I don't want to suddenly do it and then you not see it. Um, that was literally just done on, on a buff on a drill. But if you haven't got one of those, um, what I tend to do is I get a bit of aluminium auto sole polish or Maguire's, like so. There's my glove, glove on. and a bit of fine wire wool. If you just tend to rub. So as you can see in the early video, I've just done the middle, so I'm doing both the edges and the sides. So it doesn't take much effort, there's not that much oxidisation, it'll come up. 
and then it's just literally plenty of elbow grease and maybe you can see the difference from what it was to what it is to get that mirror finish okay so when I'm all done um, yeah I'll come back and we'll start getting it back together Oh guys, welcome back. Uh, having sort of polished up now. So I'll give you a final polish when it's all assembled back together. Um, so first up, we'll put this light assembly back. I'm going to take these out after once we've got it partially assembled, um, just to check the bearings need. Because they need grease and stuff like that. So I didn't want to do it with you guys not being able to see. So first up, we'll put the light back in. Well, casing. So, and then just push and then it clips. Simple as. Okay, you can see that. Can do it again. Okay, so again, top where it says Kirby, slot that in there, and then let's push it towards itself. Simple. Okay, next process is this. So, we're going to put the light assembly back in. So, the light assembly just goes on there and slots in there. Like so, no. This is going to, might be a tricky part, might not. Okay, now this flips upside down, like so. And if you remember that, literally clips in there, like so. Okay. Right, next we've got the three little screws, or two little screws. So you gotta try and balance that and just get them back in the hole. I'll just pre-start it. Let's have them pre-started. And we'll just pre-start the other one. Just, I don't know if you can actually see, so it's just there and one in there. Try and angle it, there you go, so you can see them two in there. Okay, so we'll just tighten those up first and then we'll get the hinge assembly back on. And we want it to cable to the wire back. Check over the ball, but that's not it. But yeah, we'll soon find out. And that is going in there, like so. Three little screws. 
go in there. Oops. So we'll get that back in first and then we'll screw it back on. So cleaning wise it wasn't that bad, it was mainly just the dust from the storage. Like I said the bushes were fine, there was barely anywhere on them whatsoever. Um, there was nothing actually in here, so I didn't bother taking it out. Um, there's a third screw on there. Yeah. Um, it's pretty pointless disturbing the silicon if I didn't need to. Um, I mean really the only time you disturb that is if you don't want to take the whole motor out. And um, you just want to change the fan assembler. So now those go in there like so. Is it that one? Nope. That one. 15. And then put that on the top there. Cable to all that back down onto there. So it's going there. Okay, that's where it's just to keep it out of the way of the motor. That's what it's for. Like so sweet. So, that leaves up. Sweet. So that's your uh, light assembly back together. Uh, that's good. So we'll put that over there. Right, you've noticed I took the wheels off. Well, you won't notice that yet, but yeah. Took the wheels off. So we can get this motor back in. Is get that light assembly in. Mm. Well, if you remember, these are numbered. So I've got one, two, three, and four. Ready to go. So that goes back in into there. Like so. Make sure there's no cables tucked underneath that foam wire. Um, bush wire goes under there. There's a little notch out there for the bush wire. And we'll slot it in. She should. There we go. Sweet ass. Now, if you remember these two, one's your earth wire. So, put that there. And tighten that up. I think it's a 15. Side, you can see. So I'll put this one in and that one in there. Now, if you remember, we had two self tapping screws. These are what came out the bottom, and those will go through the bottom into here. You can see that, and there's one on the other side you can't see. Okay, so you put those. Drop those in there. Put them in there. And again, it's a 15. Torx 15. And so, and that's that. Right, next up, 
I'm going to get these wires in and get that fan assembly back on. I mean that um, lord assembly back on. So, remember we've got one wire that goes here, if you can see. And there's one that goes beyond these bunch of wires, right in an awkward position. So, we put that one in first. If I can see it. So I don't know if you can see that. So I'll lift this down. So it literally goes just behind the back here. Okay. And then your other one is the top, and that's your light wire. But you've got to get those in first before you can put these wires in. Otherwise you'll never get it. So the longest one goes in there. Now it's going to be a pain to do. so I can get that wire in. Might make life a little bit easier. Put it right down the back down on the bush assembly. So if we pull it in. That's it, I'm getting to it with more access there. And I'll put that push assembly back in after so that one literally goes in there. These wires we can now do our one, two, three, four. So I've got them two there. So they've all moved around. So good job. Put them in, mark them up. On the later model, also on the same trier, they are colour coded, but on this one for some reason, there was just one coloured one. So we'll put number four on first. So it's right at the bottom in the white. Then number three. Then number two. And then number one. Okay. And then our other shorter wire just connects there. So that just connects. Can you see? I don't know if you can see. It just connects into there. So we might as well put that one in now. And that should light up. Right, so we'll just move that out of the way for a second. And we'll get this bush assembly back in. Again, don't over tighten this screw because it is just a self tapper and you will thread it. Um, when I changed the bushes on my G4, obviously it's been serviced a couple of times, well, a fair few times over the years by Kirby, and they had threaded the actual screw because when I come to take it out, it just came out. You can get a bigger size screw and put it in there. Okay, now that turns around. That way. Okay. So again, grab our screws. So what we've got is these two long ones. Go through the front into there. So like so. And again, I think it's the Torx. 15 
just going to tighten these up. I'll have to line it up a little bit. There you go. I have got a um, drill here, but I tend to tighten them up by hand first and then go in because I don't want to be stripping off the aluminium. Um, that's that. Again, that goes in there because that's your cancel one. And that again is a 15. And that just screws into the uh, power switch just to hold it in place, I think. Right. To do those. Right, I'll just go and get the wheels. Right, so just a quick backtrack. I did forget to put these in. Let's try and rush. So just go and do these two screws again to slide that back in there. So again, da -da -da -da. Just want to do those. I mean, I could have done it off camera, but I thought, yeah, it's an easy mistake to make. I'd rather you guys see that, and uh, then you remember to put. I will put a note upon the camera. Don't forget to put the exhaust section back in first. That. It goes in there, along the slope, push that down, and then you've got a self tap up Phillips screw. It just goes in the side, there's my Phillips screw over there. Just hang it there. So we just put that back in there, make sure that locates. Locating at the minute, which means it's up. there. We go now, it's in. Just need pushing down and tighten her up. Flip her over. She's no worse catching on the wire on the uh, same way. Put your two long bolts back in the front. You have to jiggle it just to get them to line up. That one's in. Now the old um, <clears throat> early G3s and G4s, I don't know about G5s, but all these were Phillips, which was an absolute nightmare. And um, they used to round off with many, when you've had many services done, especially for those using drills, they tend to round them off. So the torques seem to be a lot better. My only issue with the Kirby's now is they, this casing, up until the G7, was aluminium. And now they've changed it to um, like a polycarbonate plastic, um, which I prefer the aluminium. But it's got an insert in it for the screws, so I don't know how well that'd last. I mean, my G4, the only thing that rounded off was that one from the service, and one of these, which I just self tapped and put a bigger screw in. But um, yeah, we'll see how long the polycarbonate lasts. I think it was just to save on money. Right, so. <clears throat> Next. Right, next. So, tech drive. As you see, I took the wheels off and I was just pick them up and put them down. And lost them. Got, ah, there they are. Two circlips. Okay, really tiny ones. So, if I put them on top of there, I won't lose them. So, you're going to need a pair of these. Actually, open them up. Okay, and then your wheel literally pops on, back on, 
with the cottage shape there and the opening for the circlip goes on the flat side of the spindle so then we'll do that and then we've got to get them out and if you like me you've got big thumbs these circlips are a pain in the ass It's in. Just got to get the circle pliers out. Okay, just make sure that that is on and that circle clip is definitely down in the groove because what you don't want is that wheel coming off when you ask. When you've got your tech drive going, otherwise you're going to take your bloody hub cap off to put it back on. And if you loot and then you end up losing the circuit. Okay, so turn it over and put this one in. Okay, this spindle does move up and down, so just bear that in mind. And when you've took the wheels off, it's not something that's dropped, it's just the fact that that, that shaft, axle shaft, moves back and forth. So, there we are. Close that, and then try and wiggle. Close and wiggle that out. Same clips. There we go. So again, make sure that that circle, if you can see it, is perfectly locked in. Okay. So that goes that way. We've got more bits. There we go. So again, that goes that way. So that slots over there, and then that slots through there. What we're going to do when we put it back in is we're just going to put a little bit of fresh grease in here. Okay. We can lubricate this with a bit of three in one. Okay. Never ever lubricate this shaft. It will just cause you problems. Doesn't need any. Right, just get some scissors, cut that off. Okay, so you just put a little bit of lubrication in there, a little bit where your wheel goes, in there, just stop it squeaking and a little bit in there. That's it. That's all we need. Alright, then we we'll just put the grease literally snibbing. We'll probably do this before we put it together actually so you can see. So you want a little bit of grease just in there where that's going to slide in there the shaft. Like so. Probably a little bit over here, just where it's going to move. Okay, just bear in mind, too much is going to attract dust again, but that's something you sort of have to live with. So we we'll slot her in and put her down. Now, put that back in. Okay.
Okay, let's push that one back. Slide that in. Yuck. Remember we've got our three screws. So it's got that. So uh, <coughs> still gonna put two in here, but I'll do that in a second. So I'm gonna put a once it's in dry. And then what we'll do is get our belt and slide it over. Oops. Slide it over there. And slide it back over our drive motor. There we go. Okay, there's no actual tension on these, it, it just is what it is. <coughs> Again, if we grab that, we'll grab our three screws. Oops, wrong one. Yeah. Maybe we should have brought those screws over right? See by the bottom of this, it's still, I didn't have to clean it really. It was spotless on the outside apart from the dust. I mean, it's never actually been used, definitely never been used for shampooing. Um, when I shampoo with mine, I tend to turn it upside down and uh, draw it, make sure it's all dry so it doesn't corrode. So if you ever buy a curb and it's all corroded along here, it's because people have either stored it you know, in a garage or in a shed, or they've shampooed with it and left it and not dried it off. Oops, I'll put the wrong one in there. So again, just get that one out. Not that one. Next up, um, we'll get the wheel, wheel assembly. I should be able to get that back in after. All right. So it's not working. All right, grab, put it on pause and I'll grab the wheel assembly. All right, so I'm back um, with the wheel assembly. I've cleaned it. It's been in the sink, washed it out. It's pretty clean. I did clean all the glue out with some kitchen towel. So we're going to put some fresh grease in. I'm just using just Valvoline wheel bearing grease because it's only a light grease, it's not going to get that hot anyway. So we're going to need a little bit in there, like so. Not too much, just a little bit. And then you're going to need something in here for that to slide up and down. So again, not loads. But you don't want to grease all over your carpet. Okay, so just enough for that to slide up and down. And your spring goes in there also. In fact, we can put a bit in with the spring. Just a tiny bit. Put the spring in. Now, I find it easier to put that in first and then sort of hook this over. So we take it, oops, don't lose the spring. So, hook it on, push that down, slot it in, let it pull back up on itself, and it will literally hold itself. 
that way then you can get your clamps on. Put your screws in. Oops, helps if you can see actually. Okay, so I don't know if you saw that. Again, I'll do it again just in case. So what I did, because I didn't notice if you were off camera then. Okay, so I press this down, slot the back edge of this over it, and then let it pull against itself. Okay, so oops. Then you can put these brackets back on and get your screws back in. Can't believe the condition this is in, considering it's from 1999. There's one. Get the other one. And then back then, I know when I was selling the Kirby's back in 92. We were selling them at £2,400. Um, Australian prices equate to like three times that back then, I assume. So, I hate to think what they were here and what they paid for it. Okay, now I've got to try and get that back. I've got to drop the drive out to get that back in. I think. Can we bear it in or not? Probably not. Okay. So I'll put these two in. So these are the two screws for the rear of the headlights. They're just the black ones. They might not be black in your Kirby, obviously. They could be silver, so I'll screw that back in anyway. And it takes two seconds to drop this tech drive out just to put that back in. Working, which it is. That's that. So make sure she's in drive. We'll just drop this assembly out to get it back in. Okay, sorry about this, guys. It's a few forgetfulnesses today. You live and learn. This is me fourth, fifth curvy after the bar. see that or with a pin it's on the inside and that'll just slot into the switch Got it. Alright. 
So when you put your tip drawers back in, you've literally got to lift, hold that up. Okay, otherwise it's a pain in the ass. So actually hold her up. You can pull it back down after that. There we go. She'll sit on top of the motor and she'll fall down the side. Alright, so put the belt on. Okay. And then take that up. And we're in. Okay. So get for broke that. Put these three bolts back in. Cleanest Kirby I've ever referred. Um, the same tree I got it was just wow, disgusting. Okay, so again, I would say just put a little bit of grease, not a lot, just a bit on that, and a bit on there, and on there for that to move. And if it's not, Well, I'm going to know it's plastic, but can't hurt it. There you go. Sweet. Cool. Alright, so what else was I doing? Well, I don't need that grease. I might need that three in one. So, like I was saying, just check the bearings behind here because there might be full of crap or dirty we'll have a look and put it down there and we'll lubricate them anyway and use the space of the rock there. Okay. Sounds like there's some grit behind there. So we just yeah, pulls that out. So there you go. Spacer. Sand and grit. There's your bearings. Okay, so what we might do is we'll just take those out. And so I'll we'll just give that a bit of a wipe. Get some kitchen towel. Okay. 
right? A little spice ring. Okay, if you need to adjust the tension on the tech drive, it is via this, you just slacken these off. If it's too loose, okay, that's pretty good. You just tighten that down a bit, so we'll tighten that. Tighten that. Tighten that. And then tighten that. And just put a bit of three in one to lubricate those bearings. Oops, less is more. Oops, Not too much. So, pull the excess off. You just want enough to go in to lubricate those bearings for that tech drawer to be moving back and forth. So, this helps clean it anyway. That's it. So when you put this back on, just make sure that locates there because that actually does your, your tech drive back and forth. So it just goes over the front. Get our Torx 20s. What I'm going to do is loosely tighten these. And I can see where the screws have been before anyway. Um, they're meant to be roughly central, so but, so if you have any issues, just readjust it. But they work out about central. That's that. All right, on the home stretch. So we've got that together. I'll just quickly wash my hands. So I just pause this. Right, because what I didn't want to do is be getting oil over dirt over all the bits I've washed and cleaned. So, alright, so we've got these bits. So these just slot back on there, also. Just by the side. And slots in there. Like so. The front bit slots in there, got your fingerprints everywhere. Okay, so this just goes over there. Also, nothing left to do but pull. The two countersunk screws just in there. So we'll start it off. tend to tighten these overly tight because of getting the back two screws in as well because you have to align it up with the plastic so I tend to do that first then grab my two back screws so that's the bottom that's that these two that's that one so these are for here, so at least then you can line it up and if that plastic you can move it a little bit so you get in line. And again, just loosely tighten those, grease all over my aluminium. Shut up! Sorry about that, it's just the dog. Oi! Bed. Come on. Just the car out the front. 
Mm. Alright, so flip around. That's in. That's not in yet. So we get this. This has got two lugs, so you just literally lift it in and it clips in. But what you need to do first is put the power lead in. So I'll just show you again how to get that back out. But it's come out anyway. Because our power lead's got to go on down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's your top. Mm -hmm. Look here. Top that in. Oh, I'm going to put the postman's out. Just pause. Right, I'm back. If you can hear the dog, it was the postman. Um, she's barking at him. So sorry about that. Right, so we've got our lead in. This bit just lifts in. Get your cord, make sure it slots in properly. It's just a kettle lead in the day. Push it forward and then back. Just, I'll show you again. There's a little lug just there that has to slot in. So you get that in first and then you push it forward and then that lug slots behind it. So again, going straight like that. Push it forward and then back. Okay. Get our screw. And just tighten that up in there. Not too tight. Just there. So we're going to round it off. This bit here just slots under there. On the new sentry is it screws to there, which is a lot easier. Uh, I don't know, I don't know what I prefer, but I prefer this. Because to me it is sort of a neater finish because you haven't got two excess screws, but then you've got an ugly screw there, but Six or one half a dozen of the other. So again, slot that in. Put that over the top. It's her in. You'll see that locating hole. It's the very thin screw we've got here. It goes in the back. Again, it's Torx 10. So locate it. Tighten it up. Not overly. And then you've got your big last one, that big fat one. <clears throat> just goes in the bottom for the little thing and that's the Torx 15 again so I mean the main main side screw you're always going to need is mainly a Torx 10 and a Torx 15 um, when you come to do <coughs> the two massive screws here that do tech drive adjustment they're a Torx 20 so now let's see how, whether she works I haven't got a bag in it at the minute, so what I'll do is I'll nick. So I don't want to dirty the bag. I'm not dirty the bag, but I don't want to blow into the bag because it's still wet from yesterday. And when I washed it, so I'll just put my Centria bag on for now. Just to get that to see if that works. And we'll just connect the hose. Connected the air intake, but hey ho, shut over. Oh. Sweet. So, again, I'll just check that and check if the light is working. So, she's all good. Um, do the tech drive, so I'll just the handle. Driving a dream. His sentry is so tight. I said, I don't know if you can see the difference so on the um, G5, I mean G6. They changed it, put a handle in, and just made this a bit thinner than what it was on the G4, G3, G5. On the sentry is and I think on the late G6 
G7s, they changed it to this design with an even smaller boot and a handle to give it more airflow. Um, when I bought this Centria, <coughs> obviously the people never checked and it was all blocked up. So I think it causes a few issues if you don't keep your curvy clean, but I don't seem to have that problem. Right, so let's just get that. So I think that is still a factory finish, so I think that's pretty good compared to what it was. second Bag in <laughs> so here's the finished kit, guys. You can see cracks in there. So, if you like the video, guys, uh, hit that like and subscribe button. Um, I've got another channel I'm trying to kick off um, doing retro arcades as well. Um, but any chance I get to do Kirby stuff, I quite enjoy it. So, yeah, I'll do some more Kirby videos. Um, anything you want to see. Anything, any repairs you want to see on Kirby's, yeah, just uh, hit that like, subscribe, comment down below. And yeah, uh, see you soon. Thanks, bye.